Hello, welcome to my presentation. I am Nurul Athar, PMP, CPHIMS and ITIL certified and have 10 plus years of experience in healthcare IT. I have prepared this presentation in compliance with JCI, Joint Commission International MOI 7 standard and CBI, the Central Board of Accreditation for Healthcare Institution MOI 5 standard. Presentation methods and technique. Okay, I have used mind mapping and chunking. Mind mapping is a graphical way to represent ideas and concepts and chunking a way of dealing with remembering information by separating into small groups or chunk. References. These are the references which I used to develop my presentation. Let's go back to the main topic. I have divided my talk into following main areas. Leadership competencies in healthcare, data information management in healthcare, data collection, processing and analysis. Selection and use of indicator in assessment and improvement of work process in healthcare, it's also called decision making. Healthcare, healthcare dashboard versus scorecards and data information, confidentiality, privacy and security in healthcare. Let's explore each topic one by one. Leadership competencies in healthcare. Healthcare performance and improvement are significantly depend on the existence and quality of professional management of healthcare organization. Healthcare professional should should display ethical, just and equitable behavior at all times, commit to active lifelong learning of sound management and leadership practice and demonstrate those management and leadership practice in execution of their daily responsibilities. So as a resource for training less senior healthcare managers, commit to improve the health of population and individual. Depth and breadth of knowledge healthcare managers need to know to ensure their organization and uh, healthcare systems are operating effectively in providing optimal care to population. So, population so can be categorized into five critical domains. Leadership, communication and relationship management, professional and social responsibilities, health and healthcare environment and business. Healthcare managers, healthcare managers, leaders should demonstrate competence in all the five domain areas. The definition of the domain are as follows: leadership, the ability to inspire individual and organizational excellence, create a shared vision, and successful manage change to attain an organizational strategic ends and successful performance. Leadership intersect with other four domains. Communication re relationship management, professional and social responsibility, health and healthcare environment, and business. Let's see definition of each. Communication relationship management, the ability to communicate clearly and concisely with internal and external customer, establish, maintain relationship and facilitate constructive interaction with individual and groups. Professional and social uh, responsibilities, definition, the ability to align personal and organizational conduct with ethical and professional standards that include a responsibility to, responsibility to, the, to the patient and community a service orientation and commitment to lifelong learning and improvement health health and healthcare environment definition the understanding of healthcare system and environment in which healthcare managers and providers function 
and business definition the ability to apply business principle including system thinking to the healthcare environment now let's see competencies required in health in his domain leadership competencies okay leadership skills and behavior engaging culture and environment leading change and driving innovation Now let's see leadership skills and behavior articulate and communicate the missions objective and priorities of organization to internal and external entities incorporate management technique and theories into leadership activities analyze problem promote solution and encourage decision making now let's see the engaging culture and environment next leadership competencies Create an organizational climate built on mutual trust, transparency, and focus on service improvement that encourage teamwork and support diversity. Encourage a high level of commitment from employees by establishing and communi communicating and compelling organizational uh, vision and goals. Hold self and others accountable to surpass organizational goal. Let's see the next leadership competencies: leading ch change. Promote ongoing learning and improvement in organization. Respond to the need for change and lead the change process. Driving innovation. Increase diversity of thoughts to support innovation, creativity and improvement. Now let's see the communication relationship management competencies. Okay. Relationship management, communication skills and engagement, facilitation and negotiation. Now we'll see the relationship management. Demonstrate effective interpersonal relationship with relationship and the ability to develop and maintain positive stakeholders relationship practice and value transparent shared decision making and understand its impact on stakeholder internal and external okay demonstrate collaborative technique for engaging working with the stakeholder okay communication and skills skill engagement Exercise cultural sensitivity, sensitivity in internal and external communication. Demonstrate strong listening and communication skills. Present result of data analysis in a way that is factual, credible, and understandable to decision maker. Prepare, prepare and deliver business communication such as meetings, agendas, presentation, business reports, and project communication plans. Demonstrate understanding of the function of media and public relationships. facilitation and negotiation manage conflict through meditation negotiation and dispute resolution technique demonstrate problem solving and problem solving skills build and participate in effective multidisciplinary team okay now we'll see the professional and social responsibility competencies Personal and professional accountability, professional development and lifelong learning, contribution to profession, self-awareness, ethical conduct and social consciousness. Let's move to first, personal and professional accountability. Advocate, advocate for and participate in healthcare policy initiative, advocate for rights and responsibility of patients and their families, demonstrate an ability to understand and manage conflict of interest situation as defined by organizational bylaws policies and procedure practice due diligence and in carrying out uh, fiduciary responsibilities commit to competence integrity altruism and promotion of public good promote quality safety of care and social commitment in delivery of healthcare services let's move to next professional development and lifelong learning Demonstrate commitment to self-development, including continuing education, networking, reflection, and personal improvement. 
contribution to the profession contribute to advancing the profession of healthcare management by sharing knowledge and experience develop others by mentoring advising coaching and serving as a role model support and mentor high potential talent with both one's organization and the profession of healthcare management self awareness be aware of one's own assumption values strength and limitation demonstrate reflective leadership by using self assessment and feedback from others in decision making ethical conduct and social consciousness demonstrate high ethical conduct and commitment to transparency and accountability for one's action use established ethical structure to resolve ethical issues maintain a balance between uh, personal and professional accountability recognizing that the central focus is the need of patient community okay now let's move to the next health and healthcare environment competencies and it's this we are required to study following health systems and organization health workforce person centered health and public health let's explore each health system and organization demonstrate an understanding of system structure funding mechanism and how healthcare services are organized balance the interrelationship among access quality safety cost resource allocation accountability care setting community need and professional roles assess the performance of the organization as a part of health system healthcare services use monitoring system to ensure legal ethical and quality safety standards are met in clinical corporate and administrative function promote 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 the establishment of alliance and consolidation of network to expand social and community participation in health networks both nationally and globally now we'll see the health workforce demonstrate the ability to optimize the healthcare workforce around local critical workforce issues such as shortages scope of practice skill mix licensing and fluctuation in service person centered health effective recognizing and effectively recognize and promote patients and their families caregivers perspective in delivery of care include the perspective of individual families and community as a partner in healthcare decision making processes respecting cultural differences and expectation public health establish goal and objective for improve for improving health outcomes that incorporate that incorporate an understanding of the social detriment of health and of the socio economic environment in which the organization function use a vital statistic and core health indicator to guide decision making and analyzing health trends of population to guide the provision of health services manage risk threat and damage to health during disaster and or emergency situation evaluate critical process evaluate critical processes connected with public health surveillance and control system and communicate relevant surveillance information to increase response to risk threat and damage to health recognize the local implication of global health events to understand global interconnectivity and its impact on population health conditions okay now let's see the business competencies general management laws and regulation financial management human resource management organizational dynamics and governance strategic planning and marketing information management risk management quality improvement system thinking and supply chain management let's explore each one by one general management demonstrate knowledge of basic business practice such as business plan contracting and project management collect relevant data information and analyze and evaluate this information to support or make the effective decision or recommendation 
seek information from variety of sources to support organizational performance, conduct need analysis and prioritize requirement. Laws and regulation. Ab abide by laws and regulation applicable to work of the organization. Financial management. Effectively use key accounting principles and financial management tools such as financial plan and measure of performance, for example, performance indicators. Use principle of project operating and capital budgeting. Plan, organize, execute and monitor the resources of organization to ensure optimal health outcome and effective quality and cost control. Human resource management. Provide leadership in identifying a staff's role and responsibilities, developing appropriate job, job classification, grading system and workforce planning. Effectively manage departmental human resource process including scheduling, performance appraisal, incentive, stop recruitment, selection and retention, training and education, motivation, coaching and ment mentoring, and appropriate uh, productivity measure. Organizational dynamic and governance. Demonstrate knowledge of governmental, regulatory, professional and accreditation agencies. Effectively apply knowledge of organizational systems, theories and behavior. Int Interpret public policies, legislative and advocacy process within the organization, manage within the governance structure of the organization, create and maintain a system of governance that ensure appropriate oversight of the organization, and demonstrate knowledge of the role of leadership within governance structure. Now we see the strategic planning and marketing. Lead the development of key planning documents including a strategic plan business service plan and business case for new services plan for business continuity in the face of potential disaster that could disrupt service delivery develop and monitor operating unit strategic objective that are aligned with mission and strategic objective apply marketing principle and tools to develop appropriate marketing to the need of the community and evaluate whether the proposed action aligned with organizational business strategic plan now we'll see the information management. Use data, use data set to assess performance, establish target, monitor, indi monitor indicators and trend, and determine if deliver or deliverable are met. Ensure that applicable privacy and security requirement are upheld. Ensure optimal use of information and trend analysis within the organization through use of business intelligence, information management, clinical and business systems. Promote effective management, analysis, and communication of health information. Now see the risk management. Effective use of risk management principles and programs such as risk assessment, analysis, and risk mitigation. Quality improvement. Develop and implement quality assurance, satisfaction, and patient safety program according to national initiatives on quality and patient safety. Develop and track indicators to measure quality outcome, satisfaction and patient safety and plan continuous improvement. System thinking. Demonstrate an understanding of interdependency, integration and competition among healthcare sectors. Connect the interrelationship among access, quality, cost, resource allocation, accountability and community need. Supply and chain management. Effectively manage the supply chain to achieve timeline efficiency of inputs, material, warehousing and distribution so that supplies reach the end user in cost effective manner. Adhere to procurement regulation in terms of contract management and trending guidelines. Effectively manage the interdependency and logistic of supply chain service within organization. Now we will go to our next topic data data slash information management in healthcare data simply 
fact or figure, bits of inform information but not information itself, when data are processed, interpreted, organized, structured or presented so as to make them meaningful or useful, they are called information. Information provides context for data. Now we will see how data become information and finally become wisdom. We will see the primary data, it is just count or sum. For example, we have 35 individuals in our population with diabetes. This is the primary data. Now how it is turned to secondary data? This is secondary data. Average or rates. The patient cost us US 7000 this year a 50% increase over last year. This is secondary data. Now we will see the information. Now we will see how data become information, benchmarks and trend. And the benchmark, the national prevalence rate for diabetes is 8.3% occur, percent occur, okay. The national prevalence rate for diabetes is 8.3%, ours is 12%. Trans Hypertension is major comorbidity for the diabetes. Okay. Now, information how it's become knowledge, goal and target. And the goal, assign patient level risk scores using a statistical model to predict which diabetes will be, okay, which diabetic will be hospitalized next year. Wisdom, ac actionable information, efficiently allocate care management resources to help reduce avoidable hospitalization for at-risk patient. Now we'll see the healthcare data management definitions. Healthcare data management is the process of storing, protecting, analyzing data pool from diverse sources. Okay, managing. The wealth of available healthcare data allows health system to create holistic views of patient, personalized treatment, improve communication, and enhance uh, health outcome. Benefits of healthcare data management Create a 360 de degree view of patient by integrating patient data from all available sources. Improve patient engagement with predictive modeling and analysis based on healthcare data. Improve population health outcome by tracking current health trends and predicting upcoming ones. Make informed, high impact business decision based on data insights. How, how can organization unify data management approach? Organizations can manage their healthcare data by using technology like electronic medical record EHR and healthcare CRM, healthcare customer relationship management, in addition to other management tools like uh, RCM, revenue cycle management. Electronic health record EHRs allow physicians to record and store patient information electronically, simplifying the medical recording process for authorized user. With this tool, healthcare organizations are able to consolidate centralize and securely access patient medical data. Okay. A healthcare customer relationship CRM has the ability to integrate, measure, analyze and report on data from a variety of sources within one data hub. Specifically, this technology allows health system to consolidate consumer and patient data from electronic health records engagement centers, social media, M Health and many other sources. With CRM technology in place, healthcare organization can develop 360 degree view of patient that encompasses not only the patient's life cycle but also include consumer profiles, preference, and behavior. This figure shows how electronic health record and
customer resources management to get work together and user can access all this information through a single window this is electronic health record this is customer resources relationship management this is personalized information for patients a user can access through a website or patient portal or he can communicate with the doctors or nurses through email okay by using various data management software software including hr and scrm health system can create a holistic unified view of single console Now we'll move to the next topic, data collection, processing and analysis. Under this topic we are required to study acquiring data, data processing, data analysis, results, data, data preservation and reuse and how it's work. We'll see through the pictures. So first we'll see data, acquiring data. Acquisition involve, data acquisition involves collecting or adding to the data holdings. Okay, there are several methods of acquiring data, collecting new data, using your own previously collected data, reusing someone other's data, purchasing data, acquired from internet like uh, test, social media and photos. Now let's see data processing. A series of action or a step of form on data to verify, organize, transform, integrate and extract data in an appropriate output form for subsequent use. Methods of processing must be rigorous, rigorously documented to ensure the utility and integrity of the data. Data analysis involve action and method of perform on data that help describe facts, detect pattern, develop explanation and test hypothesis. This include data quality assurance, statistical data analysis, modeling, and interpretation of results. Results. The results of above mentioned actionable are published as a research paper in case the research data is made accessible. One has to prepare the data set for opening up data preservation and reuse. Data, preser um, data preservation involves action and procedure to keep data for future use and include data archiving and our data submission to data repository. Data preservation needs data description and documentation and metadata. Okay. So the goal of all this action is to make data findable, comprehensible and easy to use. It also involves long-term preservation and curation of data. Documentation provides an overview of resource, resource context and design. Data collection matters, data preparation, result or finding and is a key to enabling the secondary user to make informed use of the data. Metadata are providing standardized structure information explaining the purpose, origin, time, references, geographic location, creator, access, access condition and terms of use of data now we'll see how it works this this picture show how data is uh, collected from various source like electronic medical record finance it's used by using a tool etl tool is called extract transform and load to data warehouse from data warehouse okay information is sent pushed to okay personalized information pushed to scorecards like a scorecard and reports dashboard graphic and chart multi-dimensional data mining and client okay so 
So what are the best practice for healthcare data management? Mapping, okay, making effective use of technology is essential to successful healthcare data management. A healthcare CRM, customer relationship management can collect, store, evaluate and generate report of patient data, elevating the burden of trying to manage this manually. Additionally, M Health tools and patient portal make it easier for patients to interact with healthcare organization. Patient love the personalized, convenient approach to their medical data that data that this solution provide. By providing these types of popular resources for their patients, healthcare organizations increase their opportunity to gather patient data. see how this okay this is variable devices data I transfer to to cloud okay and patient can view health information on his mobile device like a smartphone or tap now we'll move to next topic okay Selection and use of indicators in assessment and improvement of work process in healthcare also no means decision making. An indicator is an observable, measurable entity that so to define a concept in practical way. Okay. KPI, key performance indi indicator example for healthcare industry. This, these are the KPIs which is commonly used in healthcare like length of stay, admission and readmission rate, average treatment cost. Okay, these are the indicators used in healthcare. Okay. So now uh, let's see the Aris hospital stay. Keep off on the indicator. Evaluate the amount of time your patient or staying in your facilities after admission. The the average length of stay in hospital is a pretty straightforward KPI. I just measure the time spent on areas by a patient accepted in facility. This healthcare metric is very general one and can vary greatly according to type of stay. It, it measures uh, heart, uh, heart transplant surgery. Transplant surgery will increase the figure, while a wisdom tooth removal will do the opposite. This is why it is interesting to break down this KPI in different ca categories of stay, procedure, and operation undertaken, so as to have a more accurate result. You can also measure it depending on the different unit of your lo your hospitals okay. length of history okay. performance indicator after different evaluation over, over this KPI you may set a target length of history according to the type of history and procedure that you would like to achieve now let's explore the next KPI treatment cost calculate how much patient cost to your facility this is a typical healthcare KPI example for monetary management treatment costs are important matrix to track as they directly impact your finance the contribution margin you make and the capacity of your facility to, to sustain itself the purpose is not to reduce as much as possible to make profit, but to spot abnormal or exaggerated expenses and address them. You can break it down into various categories per unit, per operation, or as in our example, per age group. By acknowledging these costs, you can also budget better and allow the right in amount of money to go to right category. Okay, 25 year old patient cost on average is less than 27. Uh, sorry, 72 
your all patterns okay every statement caused by each group performance indicator calculate the treatment cost according to different categories over time and analyze the evolution Now let's move to the next topic. Healthcare dashboard versus scorecards. Measuring and sustaining outcomes improvement in healthcare is a top is a top priority for industry leaders. But when it comes to the best tools for for the job, healthcare leaders find themselves in a scorecard versus a dashboard debate. Healthcare dashboard and scorecard used in tandem, sometimes referred to as scorecards, is the best way to measure and sustain outcome. Okay. Let's see do the comparison between dashboard and a scorecard. Okay, a scorecard and dashboard. Who use it? Leaders. A scorecard is used by leaders. Who what? It's a strategic when daily, weekly, or monthly. How? A scorecards enforce accountability. A scorecard, yes. Drill down capability, no. Inform root cause, no. Provide actionable data. A scorecard provide yes. Data reported should always be actionable, or it's it's not worth reporting. Support outcome improvement? Yes. Now we'll see the dashboard. Dashboard is used by frontline staff. Okay. It's uh, operational, not a strategic. And it's real time or near real time. Dashboard doesn't enforce accountability. Drill down capability, yes, it's provide. Inform root cause, yes. Provide actionable data, yes. Data reported should always be actionable, other, otherwise, it's not worth reporting. And support outcome improvement, yes. Now let's do the comparison between a scorecards and dashboard. A scorecard is a strategic, high level, and long term. And a scorecards for le leaders. Hmm. A scorecard provides. Okay, scorecards provide high level one page overview of health systems long term strategic outcome improvement goals. For example, reduce readmission, increase average patient satisfaction, and reduce average OR turnaround times. Scorecards are long term, slow to change as goals change over time, weeks, monthly, or year. year. The average an enterprise data, an enterprise data warehouse. Okay, sorry. The leverage and enterprise data, uh, enterprise data warehouse, which combine EMR, financial slash billing, and patient satisfaction data to track a strategic goal. The data latency caused by daily or weekly goal is perfectly fine for the long term strategic goal captured in a scorecards. Scorecards are typically organized by clinical program or specialty and measure perform performance against this goal for example on target at risk off target using simple visual visualization for example raw number arrows and spotlight scorecards are web accessible mobile friendly for example tablet and smartphone and ever present because they are not pushed or pulled reports mm -hmm. Scorecard for leaders. 
Healthcare leaders use a scorecard to enforce ownership and accountability by assigning key stakeholders to each strategic goal, leaders who have influence over employees and process. This, fig this figure is an example of scorecards. This is the goal, this is the target, this is the owner, frequency, and green reflect under target, under requirement. Yellow is represented in a danger zone, and red one is out of target, need to improve the process. Now we will see the dashboard. Dashboard is operational in depth and real time. What we see in a scorecard, a scorecard is strategic high level and long term. Okay. Dashboard is uh, operational in depth and real time. Dashboard for frontline staff. So let's see. Unlike their long term, a strategic unlike Unlike their long-term strategic scorecard counterparts, dashboard provide real-time or near-real-time operational information encompassing tactic tactical sco scenario. A scorecard tells health system how they are doing overall. A dashboard tell system what is happening now using interactive metrics with drill-down capabilities. Okay. Dashboard for frontline. Okay, frontline staff, for example, admission staff, OR coordinator, and nurse manager use a dashboard to monitor their daily progress in achieving system-wide outcomes, outcome improvement goal. For example, a health system director of support service use a dashboard to monitor call volume, wait time, and reported issues so he can react immediately. Okay, this image is an example of dashboards okay nearest recipient wait time by hours patient status waiting discharge transfer okay current uh, room status and nursing ratio patient and nurse for uh, every uh, for every three point, for every three percent, there is one nurse. Okay. Now we'll move. Let's move to our last topic: data information, confidentiality, privacy, and security in healthcare. confidentiality, privacy and security and then we will explore tips to protect patient confidentiality, privacy and security. Let's see. Okay. Confidentiality. Let me minimize on this. So it will, okay. Conf confidentiality in healthcare refers to the obligation of professional who have access to patient records or communication to hold that information in confidence. Okay, everyone in the organization is responsible for patient confidentiality. Board members, executive leadership, clinical staff, physician and nurse, administrative and cl clerical staff, students and intern and volunteers. Okay. Following is the list of patient information that must remain confidential. Identity, for example, name, address, social security, date of birth, okay, etc. Physical condition, emotional condition, and financial information. Okay. Confidentiality, guiding principle. Access patient information only if, if there is a need to know. Discard confidential information appropriately, for example, locked, locked tra trash bins or Okay, shredders. Don't discuss confidential matter where others might overhear. For example, cafeteria, elevator, buses, or restaurant. Don't 
leave patients charts or files unattend unattended report suspicious activities that may be that may compromise patient confidentiality to organization privacy officer now let's see the privacy privacy as distinct from conf confidentiality is viewed, viewed as the right of the individual client or patient to be a, to be let alone and to make a decision about how personal information is shared i'll read it again privacy as distinct from confidentiality is viewed as the right of individual client or patient to be let alone and to make a decision about how personal information is shared what is protected health information phi stand for okay protected health information and includes uh, demographic information that identifies an individual and and is created or received by healthcare providers health plan employer or health care clearing house okay relates to past present or future physical or mental health or condition of an individual describe the past present or future payment for the provision of healthcare to an individual where is uh, protected health information is found in medical record patient information system billing information bills receipt and uh, okay it is see test results x-rays clinic list label on iv bags patient manuals conversation telephone notes in certain situation patient information on mobile devices Permitted use and disclosure of protected health information include treatment of patient, direct patient care, coordination of care, consultation, referral to other healthcare providers, payment of healthcare bills, operations related to relate to operation related to healthcare, research when approved by an institutional review board (IRB) required by laws, for example, Saponia Court Order (ETC). Need to know. Employees should only use access the minimum necessary information to perform their job. Let's explore security. Security refers uh, refers okay. Security refers directly to protection and is prote protection and is specifically to mean used to protect the privacy of health information and support professional in holding that information in confidence the concept of security has long applied to health records in paper form locked file cabinet or a simple example as a use of electronic health record system uh, system queue and transmission of health data support uh, billing became the norm the need for regulatory guideline specific to electronic health information became more apparent when we okay when we protect uh, patient data we help individual trust between patients and provider ensure protected health information phi is not disclosed to unauthorized person don't send email containing protected health information unless it is encrypted log off your computer if you have to leave your workstation to log off press the control alt delete control alt del key at the same time on the keyboard and then choose log off this picture show how to log off your computer if you suspect someone is using your logging id you must report to the information security section immediately okay. now let's see the health informatics information security management in health using iso iec 27002 ISO stand for International Organization for Standardization and we see two sorry ISO 27799 colon 2017 gives guidelines for organizational information security standard and information security management practice including the selection implementation and management of control taking into 
consideration the organization information security risk environment It defined guidelines to support the interpretation and implementation in health informatics of ISO slash IEC 27002 and is a companion to international standard. ISO 27799 colon 2017 2016 provides implementation guideline for the control described in ISO IEC 27002 and, and supplement them where necessary so so that they can be effectively used for managing health information security by implementing ISO 27799 colon 2016 Healthcare organization and other custodian of health information will be able to ensure minimum requisite level of security that is appropriate to their organization circumstance and, and that will be that will maintain the confidentiality, integrity and, uh, and availability of personal health information in their care. Okay. It applies to health information in all its aspects whatever form the information text, word, numbers, sound, recording, drawing, video and medical image, whatever mean are used to store, printing or writing on a paper or storage electronically and whatever mean are used to transmit by hand through fax or computer network or by post, as the information is always be appropriately protected. ISO 2799 colon 2016 and ISO IEC 27002 taken together define what is required in terms of information security in healthcare. They do not define how this requirement are to be met. Okay. D that is to say to fullest extent possible ISO 2799 Seven nine nine colon twenty sixteen is technology neutral neutrality with respect to implementing technologies is an important feature. Security technologies is still undergoing rapid development and 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 the pace of that changes now measured in months rather than years. By contrast, while subject to periodic review, international standards are expected on the on the whole to remain valid for years, just as importantly technological neutrality leaves vendors and service providers free to suggest new or developing technology that meet the necessary requirement that ISO 27799 colon 2016 describe. Now see tips to protect uh, patient confidentiality, privacy and secu security. Okay. Passwords are only effective if they are never shared and if the guidelines for the creating a strong password are followed. A strong password must be at least 8 character long, must mix upper and lower case letters, incorporate at least one number. Mm. Do don't contain repeating or consecutive letters or number, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4 and A, A, B, B, are not true, common words or phrase. Don't share your password with anyone, including co-worker, supervisor or the help desk. Don't write down your password or password or include password in email. Think before you act. Never look at person's record out of curiosity when the good, even with good intention, follow the minimum necessary standard. Double check names and phone number before sending PHI by fax or email. Log out of your computer if you have to leave your workstation. Never share password. Familiarize yourself with the organization notice of privacy practice.
okay that bring me to end of my presentation thank you for watching and i hope you found it interesting